Let's make money, sports bettors. We're going to be going through these FanDuel odds boosts and figuring out which ones are mathematically profitable, which ones are positive EV. So I say this all the time, but books offer promos, right? You can actually see there's tons of promos for today. There's college basketball profit boosts, but a lot of people get sketched out like, oh, why is FanDuel boosting the odds on this specific bet? Giannis and Embiid each to score 30 plus points. Why are they boosting the odds on this? Well, promos are a way, they're kind of like loss leaders for a sports book. They offer them to bettors as a way to keep bettors coming back to their platform, right? FanDuel doesn't want you visiting DraftKings or checking DraftKings on a daily basis. They want you checking FanDuel. So they offer these promos, and not all of the promos are profitable, but some of them are really good. So this one we actually went through yesterday. John Jones to win by sub or points versus Cyril Gaon. Plus 100 to plus 200 odds, it's really good. But there's two new ones, Giannis and Embiid, 30 plus. Let's start there. So they're boosting it from plus 135 to plus 200. Is this any good? Well, FanDuel is the only sports book that offers alternate player prop lines. So you can see Embiid's line, right, is at 31 and a half points. Giannis's line is at 31 and a half points as well. But we want them, right? We want to know. What is their probability of scoring over 29 and a half points, right? Over 29 and a half is the same as 30 plus points. So we want to know, well, what's the probability they each score over 29 and a half? So what we can do is we can go to player points and then we can go to alternate points, right? And then we'll scroll down to 29 and a half and you can see on FanDuel, so this is Embiid 30 plus points or over 29 and a half points, their market on is over is minus 200, right? That's the price on the over. The under is plus 148. So what we can do is we can take this market and put it into what's called a no vig calculator, right? And you can see the win probability is 62.31%. So this is the most important calculator on odds jam, um, no vig odds calculator. It's the most important calculator in sports betting. So I really recommend you read through this text. You understand it. It's absolutely critical that you understand what is going on in um, a no vig odds calculator. But what it essentially does is it takes a sports book's market and it tells you what's the win probability for the over, what's the win probability for the under, right? So these are equal and opposite outcomes. Embiid either goes over 29 half or he goes under. So the sum of the probabilities is one, right? He's going over or he's going under. So what this calculator tells you is, hey, based on the fact that Pinnacle um, or that FanDuel's alternate market that they have Embiid juiced all the way to minus 200, and they have the under at plus 148, he's 62.31% to go over 29 half or to have 30 plus points, which should make sense, right? If sportsbooks are setting his line at 31 half with the over juiced, with the over favored, then obviously he's going to be over 50% to have over 29 and a half points, right? We're getting two points better in this boost. We're not betting him at over 31 half. We're betting him at over 29 half. So you can imagine like, okay, um, FanDuel saying he's 62.31% to go over. Imagine if he was minus 300, you know, plus 248, then he's going to be more likely, according to that sportsbooks market, to go over 29 and a half points. So sportsbooks, you know, it's intuitive. Sportsbooks imply win probabilities through their odds. You know, let's say they had Embiid minus 500, you know, plus 400, something like that to go over 29 and a half points, then he's going to be 80.65% to go over 29 and a half points. So sportsbooks imply win probabilities through their odds, which should make sense, right? As you go down in number of total points. So now the line actually just moves. So we're gonna have to update this, but you can see over 26 half, they have at minus 400, over 25 half, they have at minus 500. So the lower you go, the more likely he is to go over that line, which should make sense. So now FanDuel just moved, right? They were minus 200 previously. And the Embiid was 62.31% to go over. But we can see, you know, this market's dynamic. FanDuel just moved to minus 186, plus 138. So now they're a little less bullish on Embiid going over. So we're going to see that probability drop. Now it's 60.75% according to betting markets, right? So now we have Embiid. And now we got to do the same for Giannis. So we can scroll. And a lot of people may be like, oh, is there any correlation here? So Giannis is minus 200 plus 148. Is what you have to remember is if Embiid is in the game longer, 
then Giannis is probably in the game longer. So if anything, there's probably positive correlation here, right? If Embiid is, is playing a lot of minutes, it's probably a pretty close game and Giannis is also playing a lot of minutes. So there's also probably the little bump of positive correlation. So this is gonna be 62.31%, right? So FanDuel had Embiid minus 186. They have Giannis minus 200 to go over 29 half. So Giannis is more likely to go over, right? Because lines are more juiced towards his over. So we're gonna see a higher win probability for Giannis 30 plus. So now we have the probability Embiid goes over 30 or 30 plus and Giannis goes 30 plus. So what we need to do is we need to multiply these probabilities together, right? Which you can do right here. So this shows you what's the probability they both, right? This is Embiid 30 plus and Giannis 30 plus, right? You just multiply these probabilities, 37.8%. This isn't even accounting for the slight bump in positive correlation, right? So there's a 37.8% chance they both go over. So your loss probability, the probability at least one of them doesn't score 30 points is one minus this. So what you can do now is say, okay, we're betting $50 at plus 200 odds. So we're betting 50 to win 100 in profit. And we're winning 37.85% of the time, according to the no vig odds, right? According to betting markets. In betting markets, you know, <laughs> are the most accurate way to back out win probabilities for specific wagers, right? Because it's where people are putting their money where their mouth is. So long story short, this boost is profitable. You know, there's a 37% chance, 37.8% chance we win $100. And there's a 62% chance we lose $100 or we lose our stake of $50, I apologize. So that's $7 in profit margin on a $50 stake. So your edge, or your profit margin is going to be right here. It's going to be seven divided by, right, your stake of $50. It's going to be 13.5%. So this boost is really profitable. Long story short, I bet it, right? We can see that right here. And I also bet this John Jones one, right? 545. And then we can see this Giannis one. So if you have questions about any of this, you can let me know. Um, this UFC boost was a little interesting, but I'm going to skip it. So you can see right here on the betting exchanges, they have nickel to win by TKO or disqualification, which is, I believe, the boost we're looking at. Yep, plus 240, minus 350. That's the market. So this is in, you know, this isn't an American platform, but they're one of the only sports books to offer two-way markets on TKOs. So what you'll notice about FanDuel is, right, if I go to this, uh, let's go to this nickel fight is if I go to FanDuel, you can see this guy's a big favorite, right? He's minus 1,800 to win. So he's a very heavy favorite, right? So if you go to a no vague odds calculator and you put in his market, minus 1,800 plus 900, right? You're gonna see, hey, betting markets are implying that he's roughly 90.45% to win this fight. Now you may say, oh, you know, I think Jamie Pickett is a lot more likely you know, how are betting markets accurate? Well, what you have to remember is if sharp bettors believe Jamie Pickett was more likely to win, like let's believe, let's say sharp bettors believe that Jamie Pickett was 20% to win this fight. Well, 20%, if you go to a probability calculator, 20% means plus 400 odds. So every sharp better in the world would be hammering this plus 980 down to plus 400, right? So markets, they show you the opinions of all sports bettors, right? All these sharp betting syndicates, sports books, right? The complicated models sports books have, sharp bettors have, sports betting hedge funds, right? All of that is reflected in the market. So if Jamie Pickett were actually 20% to win and that was the belief of all the sharp bettors, they would have already hammered him down to plus 400 because you'd be getting a ridiculous profit margin given he's plus 980. But long story short, I'm holding off on this FanDuel boost on Bo Nickel. And the reason is, again, is here the market, or we actually wanted to go to that um, fight quickly, is you can see if you go to Method of Victory, is they only have a one-way market. Bo Nickel to win by KO, TKO is plus 230. But they're not telling you Bo Nickel to win, um, but they're not letting you bet on him to not win by TKO, right? This is called a one-way market. So usually, 
if you think about it, you can bet on both sides. You can bet on Bo Nickel or you can bet against Bo Nickel and bet on Jamie Pickett, right? You can bet on equal and opposite outcomes. For some of these method of victory props, like Nickel to win by KO, TKO, this is a one-way market. You can't bet on Nickel to not win by KO, TKO. You can't bet the other side. So the only place you can really bet on the other side is the Betfair exchange. So we need to look at this for a two-sided market. And you can see their market is 3.4, 4.5, which is in decimal odds. So if you convert that to American odds, it means their market is plus 240, minus 350. And, you know, FanDuel is boosting this to plus 300. So you're kind of getting in the middle of this market, right? 2.4, 3.5. So you're kind of getting plus 300, which seems a little good, maybe a little bit of value, but it's kind of in the middle. Um, and this market is very wide. So I'm going to hold off for now. Maybe as we get closer to actually having fight time, this market will get tighter, right? And we can get a better sense of if this odds boost is any profit, is any good. Um, but for now, it's the market's too wide. You know, you have 110 cents in market width here. So I'm going to hold off on it. But hopefully this was helpful. Embiid, Giannis boost, really good. I'll include this spreadsheet in the video. Um, and let's make money.